Visual Basic Game Programming tutorial series. Uh, in this short video, hopefully, <laughs> I will be demonstrating how, uh, you know, just one way to create dialog boxes with uh, custom brushes, mainly uh, how to create a box with a uh, semi-transparent background and whatnot. And I'll show you here. If I press my T button, you can see um, a little dialog and I can move around you can actually see uh, right through it there and we can change that opacity value so we'll go ahead and jump right into that yeah, close out of there uh, first thing we will do is uh, create a variable to monitor when uh, our dialog key is pressed so I'm just going to call this uh, show dialog. Okay, simple enough, right? <laughs> and I'm going to dim open dialog as a boolean equals false. Okay, so by default we're not showing our dialog. We want to do that on a key press. And what we'll have to do next is uh, go down to our key handling. I'm using the code from uh, my part 4 tutorial update so we have our new uh, movement strategy here. I'm just gonna say if get key state keys t I'm gonna use that for talk equals true then open dialog equals true. Simple enough. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Paste it down here. And this time we'll set it to false. So when we lift the key up, the dialog box will go away. So that's pretty simple. Next we'll create a command sub to actually create and draw the dialog box so I'm just going to drop down to the end here and I'm going to do a private sub draw dialog box and I'm not using any parameters so it should be pretty straightforward here first thing I want to do is create a brush I want to create a custom brush so I'll call it uh, BRSH and this is for the background as a brush equals new brush actually that's going to be a solid brush and here's the the important part uh, for the color I'm going to do color from ARGB so what that is is uh, alpha red green and blue so we'll choose essentially an alpha value and that's your opacity so I'm going to start with a value of 128. Uh, the values will go from 0 to 255. Uh, 128 will be 50% opacity. So we will then just select a standard color. I'm just going to use black as the default. So it'll be a semi transparent black background for that brush. Now we're going to need. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a picture frame around this. I, you know, I made a custom graphic for it, so I'm going to open up my my uh, sprite palette here, and I'm going to add a new picture box. Do do do. There it is. Put that right in there. I'm going to um, set the image for that. An import a new one. Let's see, I want my desktop here, and my tutorial folder, part five, and there it is, my frame. Okay, so essentially I've got a transparent mask. This will be an invisible color, this fuchsia background, and all we should see is this, this, you know, these borders. I'm going to paint the entire thing, so it's going to happen uh, since I'm not going to be painting individual chunks of it it's going to stretch it across the screen. So you're going to have kind of a weird uh, wide side on it. This should uh, stay pretty pretty much as it is. 
you'll see what I mean here. I will go ahead and bring this up here. I'm gonna overlap those a little bit, no big deal. Okay. Um, one other thing we do need to do is give it a name. I'm gonna call this PB um, Dialog. So my picture box for my dialog. Then I'll go back into my form code. And I'm going to dim um, BMP dialog as bitmap equals new bitmap. And I'm going to reference the graphics form. <coughs> what in the world? I think my shift key is stuck here. Sorry. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'm going to reference the PB dialog, you can see it right there, and the image for that. And last thing we're going to want is a font. So I'm going to create a new font, uh, chat as font equals new font. And I'm just going to use Verdana, Verdana, whatever. And I'm going to give it a size tw of 12. All right, so now we're going to need a source and destination rectangle. Actually, you know what? I, I think I'm just going to. No, I'll go ahead and use it. So we'll use our old ones that we used for a tile map. I'm going to use srect equals new rectangle. And I'm going to draw this, um, or I'm going to start at the topmost corner, top left corner, sorry, of the sprite. And I think that was a size of 136 by 146. You'll have to change that depending on the actual dimensions of your background sprite that you're using for your border. Then I need a destination rectangle to tell it where to draw to the form. So I'm going to say new rectangle. And I want to draw it, I'm going to draw it 10 pixels down, 10 pixels from the left, and 600 pixels um, minus well, 50 from the right edge and 90 pixels down. So we're essentially going to have 550, 90. <laughs> um, you can, you know, you're going to probably have to customize that depending on the, again, upon the dimensions of your your form and everything else. My form when I run it is, is like 640 by 480 I think because of my tile grid. Uh, otherwise it'll kind of go off the side or be too short. So I'm going to take BMP dialog dot make transparent because we do not want that fuchsia background. And Let's see, next up we are going to use our graphics object to fill a rectangle with our custom brush that we created, Oops, that's BRCH, uh, BG, and we're going to uh, just define where we're going to fill this rectangle. So I'm just going to use these uh, numbers that I had set up before. I don't know, I should just put 550 there, but uh, let's see. Again, that's going to depend on the size of your screen. You'll just have to play with those numbers. Whoops. Next up I want to draw image and I'm going to draw my BMP dialog to the destination rectangle that we defined up above. And from the source rectangle, that's rect, that we defined up above. And we're going to draw that in pixels. And then we're going to need a string to draw on that. Um, 
in reality, you're probably not going to be drawing strings to your dialog box. You'll probably be using a sprite font or something like that, actually drawing images of uh, letters and numbers and stuff. But for the sake of a quick demo, I'm just going to draw a string in here. Um, my text is going to be Princess Spoobaba. Where art thou, Rad Marvin? And I'm going to use the font that we just created, so font chat. And I'm just going to write that in a white brush. Uh, 40 pixels from the left, so it'll be within our frame. And uh, 20 pixels from the top. If it doesn't center, you know, in your frame, just right, just adjust those numbers right there, the 40 and the 20. That's just uh, telling it where to draw. And that's really all we need for our sub. And now we will go up to our graphics loop. Uh, let's see here, draw graphics. And now remember we're painting in layers again, so uh, usually when you have a text dialog or something, it should always come up over top of everything else. Uh, you're going to want to draw it above pretty much everything on your screen. So I'm going to go go down below where we draw our character and say draw dialog. Um, we'll just do a simple if open dialog equals true, then draw dialog box. Doesn't get much easier than that. So, if everything works properly, we fire off the form, we press our T button, it kicks off, it turns this to true, draws the dialog box, runs through our code here. Um, in the real world, again, uh, you're probably not going to be doing this mainly for the sake of this demonstration. All I wanted to show you was how to create these cool uh, semi-transparent backgrounds and you know for your dialogues. You probably actually put this in a class or something and create a you know a class over here to call, and you know then it'll be a lot more dynamic. You can call them, create them any size you want. Uh, it'd be good for menus and things like that as well. So. Uh, something to keep in mind there but we'll go ahead and just uh, launch this and see what happens there's our character just for fun I'm gonna take my old uh, tile map deal Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and should be able to run around and if we press our T button there we are oh you can see I kinda have some uh, anomalies here I didn't quite get my dimensions right Kind of st my background is sticking out beyond my borders, so I'd have to stretch this out. And this is where you're going to have to just play with it yourself, and you know, to get it right, because you can spend a lot of time just uh, trying to figure out how far to draw those. What if I change that to 600? Oh, that's getting better. So all I'd have to do is bring the the bottom edge of the actual background up a little bit. I wonder if I could just change the Y position to be a little shorter. Change that to 10. Run it. Oh, we're getting pretty close there. So just getting closer and closer. Just tweak those parameters a little bit and, and you'll get it looking nice. So um, I hope that was helpful. But again, mainly I just wanted to demonstrate how to cool, create a cool effect where you can, you know, do semi-transparent overlays. You can also change this opacity, like I'd mentioned before, um, just by going into this um, setting right here and changing the alpha value to something, you know, higher or lower. If we change this to uh, 192, it's going to be a lot. Should be a lot darker. Let's see harder to see through it. If you went all the way up to 255 it'd be solid black. So um, 
it's nice to have that ability to customize it. We could also change the color. I could change that to green if I wanted. See how that works? Now we have a green screen. Kind of washes out the background. You can create all kinds of nice little effects with that. Anyway, hope it was helpful, and I will catch you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mm,